Okay, so good morning, everyone. And this is actually made for you guys because, well, we, you opted to have the pre-recorded discussion instead of having a synchronous discussion today. And I'm sorry for the background noise because I am using a different laptop and I have no crisp installed here. I'm using my husband's laptop, so I'm very sorry because my MacBook is full and I cannot save any video recording there. So that's why I'm here. I am not turning on my camera because the camera of my husband is broke. <laughs> okay, so that's why I'm just, you can just hear my voice and my background noise. Maybe my son and my mom would be very noisy on the background and I am apologize to that. One of the perks of doing this in home. Yeah, one of the perks of being a work from home mom. Okay, yeah, so... This is it. We are now on module five and module five is on understanding data and ways to systematically collect data. So we have our lesson under this and that is qualitative research design. So you will know what kind of qualitative research design does your study has or does your study have, okay? And what else do I have to say? In here, this is actually the start of our methodology process. So this is already chapter three and welcome to chapter three. Okay, so let us now present to you our lesson objectives. So our lesson objectives are the following. We only have two. One, know what are the qualitative research designs, of course, and second, choose an appropriate qualitative research design aligned with your research question. So when we say research questions here, again, I'm going to reiterate that I'm referring to the statement of the problem, okay? So you will choose that. Maybe you can choose that sometime next week. So what are the qualitative research designs with an S? So according to Lead and Ombrod 2001, they have recommended five. So we have case studies, grounded theory, ethnography, content analysis, and phenomenological studies. So these are the things that we have to learn today for these are your qualitative research designs. Okay, so number one is case study. So what does it mean? I have taken a definition from Leiden Amra 2001. So when we say case study, it studies a person a program event in a defined time frame. So normally, if you are a psychology major, your professors would advise you to have case study. So what is case study? So we have more definition from Creswell. The structure of a case study should be the problem, context, issues, and the lessons learned. So the case study always starts with a problem followed by what context did you find? Why did you have chosen this study? Okay, from that problem itself. Then the issues that you have noticed once the case study is ongoing, then the lessons learned that you have gained when the case study is about to end or when the case study is over. So that's according to Creswell, 1998. So what are the sources of data collection when you do case study? You have several. You can do direct or participant observation. You can do interviews. You can use archival records or documents of physical artifacts, audiovisual materials. Okay, so these are the sources of your data collection. So what is your role as a researcher if you're going to do case study? So the researcher spends time in the natural setting of the people studied. So you have to go out there to where your participants reside and observe them. Okay, study them from their natural setting. Then how are you going to organize the report in case study? Well, the report includes lessons learned or patterns found that connect with theories. Because again, according to Creswell, it starts with a problem and it ends with a lesson learned. So that's the format of your case study. You have to present to us, to your panel, for example, if what are the lessons that you have learned regarding with your case study. So examples could be 
drug rehabilitated teenagers, transgenders, okay, so these are people, gay marriages program, success story. So normally we tend to have success stories on Jessica Soho's Sunday episodes, right? So success stories. That's one, one example for case study. Okay. Then other important notes, a case being investigated or studied may be of that individual or a group of persons. So we do not limit to one person only, but you can do groups. And lastly, this kind of research is used to gain deeper insight on a phenomenon, validate earlier findings, or gather more deep-seated data. Okay, so that is your case study from the word itself, case. Okay, K is rooted from the problem that you have seen, for example. Okay, so in here, if we are to really understand more on case studies, for, for so for the example, drug rehabilitated teenagers. So the problem is drugs. Okay, so that is your source. Then, of course, so that's a problem. What's the contact that you will have? Of course, you will choose. So you have chosen rehabilitated teenagers. So that is where, or that is how case study would go. It always starts with a problem, case, okay? Then we go to number two, ethnography. So it studies groups of people that share a common culture, according to Lady and Almer 2001, okay? Share a common culture. But when we talk of ethnography, it talks about culture, okay? We also have a definition from Mac Milan, 1993. So he defines this type of research as interactive and which requires relatively extensive time in a site to, to systematically observe, interview, and record processes as they, as they occur naturally at the selected location. So you have to choose one ethnic group. For example, you have chosen Ifoga, then you have to stay there for six months or more or years for you to understand what Ifugaos or yeah the who are Ifugaos really, what's their culture all about and stuff like that. Okay, so that's how you do ethnography. Relatively extensive time. So what are the sources of data collection? If the interviews are lengthy, the researcher gathers documentaries by using audio tapes or videotaped media. You can use audio tapes or videotaped media to collect the data in ethnography. So what are the aspects that you have to learn in ethnography? So number one, justification of, for the study. Second, description of the group and method of study. Third, evidence to support the researcher's claims and the findings to the research questions. And fourth, the report provides evidence of the group's shared culture that developed over time. So that is the highlight of your ethnography qualitative research design, okay? You have to report evidence of group's shared culture that developed over time. Then we also have another definition from Cresswell 2003. He says that ethnographies study an intact cultural group in a natural setting over a prolonged period of time by collecting primarily observational data. So example, we have here a, the, the dissertation of Dr. Lisa Dawanis. So he or she has chosen the ethnic minority, namely the surviving cultural heritage of the Kankanis of the Lipay Batangas Benguet. Okay, so that's the example. So what are you going to do as the researcher in ethnography? Well, you have to stay for a prolonged period of time in Benguet, like what Dr. Lisa did. You have to do interviews. It can be structured or unstructured, intensive and extensive observations, consumed many hours doing field notes, administered questionnaire. Okay, these things. So that's how you're going to do ethnography. Maybe you can do ethnography once you are a millionaire and you have, you have a sponsor, like um, funding from a company. You can do that. Okay, you can stay there. Maybe I, I can choose a place in Batanes where Batanes is really beautiful, right? So maybe there's an ethnic group there that I could study. But of course, the scene every day is really breathtaking. Again, you can do ethnography once you have money. Okay. Then, number three, content analysis. 
So this calls for a detailed and systematic examination of the contents of a particular body of materials for the purpose of identifying patterns, themes, or biases. So normally, this is very common to us English majors. We tend to, or our professors would always say, what does the author mean in this kind of passage, for example? So this is very common to us. So lead in Amr 2001. So we also have definitions like this method identifies specific characteristics of the content of human communication. Okay, so quote unquote human communication. It examines choice and use of words from which concepts or images are vividly derived. Okay, then it looks at the relationship between words and their meanings stressing the system of relations between words as a source of meaning. So that's content analysis, OMG. So this is, I can really relate to this. I did several, well, action researches regarding content analysis because, again, I'm an English major, okay? Bachelor's degree, English major, master's degree, English major. So content analysis is on my blood. Okay, fine. So what's the primary data collection strategy? Recorded dialogue. It can be text-based or audio or video recorded, okay, when you do content analysis. So what's the example or what are the examples for content analysis? So one example, an examination of word choice and use of words in SONA. That's why the presidents always have their script writer, okay, because there are actually researchers that would study how they have presented their speech or how they have or how they did on their sauna, for example. Okay, that's why they have script writers. Okay. Speeches in political conventions. Yes, like the campaigns. Normally, if it's elections, upcoming ele uh, elections, okay, a lot of politicians would really say something and stuff. And well, and then third, other examples are analyzing the content of pictures and video materials that carry footages of disasters like typhoons. You can do that in content analysis because it's still a content even though it's a video. Uh, we also have a day in the life of a person with disability like that. Content analysis. All right. So we go to number four, phenomenological study. So this is actually the most common that we do in qualitative research phenomenon. Okay. The search for the central underlying meaning of the research participants' experience. So it's one of your choices, guys. Okay. To just to share a light to you. Maybe you might be thinking, what kind of qualitative research data, uh, qualitative research design do you have as a group? So one option can be phenomenological. Phenomenological. You really have to take time to pronounce this word because it's long. Phenomenological. Okay. So that's according to Cresswell. Then we have Leiden Amrad 2001. The purpose of the study is to understand an experience from the research participant's point of view. There's a song something regarding point of view. In your point of view, Truva Truva, I forgot, but I, yeah, there's a song regarding point of view. Okay. Yeah. So according to Leiden Om Omrad, you really have to understand a person regarding their point of view or points of view or experiences. Okay. Then thus, focusing on the research participant is more pronounced in this kind of quality research. So what are the sources of your data collection? You can do observations, videos, lengthy interviews, images, and others. Whatever works for you, it's fine. Then examples for phenomenological can be comfort women during World War II because, again, we are after experiences. Rehabilitated drug dependence or rescued trafficked women. Study of college graduates who opt to do community outreach with the poor sectors of society instead of practicing their professions immediately after graduation. Okay, so these examples call for experience. So if your study calls for an experience or point of views, then your qualitative research design is no other than phenomenological. Then we go to the last grounded theory. The root word is ground. So this is 
an attempt to extract a general abstract theory of a process or interaction grounded in views of the research participants. Okay, so more definitions. This process uses multiple stages of data collection and the refinement and interrelationship of categories of information. In this research design, data are constantly compared with emerging categories and theoretical sampling of different groups is done in order to concretize similarities and differences of information. So that's how you're going to do grounded theory. You have to have similarities and differences comparison. Okay, so what is the purpose of doing grounded theory? You have to build a theory that is faithful to the evidence, according to Newman, 2007. It is literally grounded on or built on data collected. Method of discovering new theory. So especially if your study is more on what is new to you. Like no other researchers have done the study or no... Um, existing studies have done so far. It's like a new discovery, like what we're doing now in the pandemic, COVID-19, it's very new to us. So that's grounded theory. So if you're going to do um, research, equality research that is grounded on that theory because you wanted to know really, then that's grounded. Okay, so example that I have here is being there, a grounded theory study of student perceptions of instructor presence in online classes okay so we have here the link i'm going to send the link on our gc so you will have reference then the researcher of qualitative study build theory by baking comparisons so what are the comparisons made like the presence of the instructor before the class during the class and after the class Okay, so that's how you would compare the, well, grounded theory for the instructor, instructor presence in online classes, okay? So that's for grounded theory. So what then is the best research design? So if you want to answer this question, then you have to answer or ask yourselves these questions first according to yin okay so number one question that you have to ask yourselves number one what is the form of the research question is it exploratory does it seek to describe the evidence or the incidents or distribution of some phenomenon or does it try to explain social phenomenon two does the research require control over behavior or does it seek to describe naturally occurring events Third, is the phenomenon under study contemporary or historical? So these three things you have to ask before you have to decide if what is the best research design for you, provided that you have not conducted yet your research. Okay? And questions, if you do prepare them to be asked next week, for the meantime, have a relaxed holy week. Because I know I discussed quickly the lesson so if you have questions i will be there to answer your questions next week okay then our reference is this then thank you credits to slides go for the presentation all right so thank you so much people for listening and i hope that you will have a relaxed holy days <laughs> okay have a great day you guys bye